Well, hi everybody. I'm Zappa, aka Zappa Zack, um, aka Eric. I'm here to say hi to everybody. We're going to be doing something new. Um, basically, we're going to be doing things on uh, tips, um, tricks to the how we're going to be how to do miniature painting. Um, also, we're going to be doing a little bit of um, assembly um, of models as well. Mainly it's going to be a fantasy for the most part because it's what I've been fo focusing on. But a little bit of sci-fi, a little bit of this, a little bit of that. Um, right now today we're just going to have a little chat session. Um, essentially we're just going to kind of go over the basics of uh, painting because a lot of videos are out there about how to paint or um, like some advanced techniques in painting but nothing really on you know, what do you do when you first start off? How do you put paint onto a figure? How do you um, uh, make a figure? Um, build a figure on a base coat um, just real simple stuff what type of tools do I need in order to um, to uh, start painting so this is basically just kind of like a, a starting off point um, we're just kind of chatting a little bit today kind of show you some things give you some ideas about um, how to uh, start your own hobby of painting uh, figures um, little miniatures um, a little bit about me. I've been painting since I was probably 12. <laughs> um, on and off for the most part. Um, and um, there's nothing, there was nothing really out there for me when I first started out. It was just basically um, kind of learn how you go. I did a lot of stuff that looked like just base painting, uh, base coat painting, and then just kind of progressed from there. Um, Eventually, I kind of self-taught how to do shadowing um, and uh, how to do highlighting just on my own because uh, there was nobody real there to show me or how to uh, teach me anything. But and I've made a lot of mistakes, made a lot of pitfalls, and I was hoping maybe I can help you guys if you want to start the hobby of uh, miniature painting to kind of avoid those things in the, from now and in the future. Um, some of the things that... Um, which just got kind of costly as time went on and um, kind of frustrating but for me for the most part um, miniature painting um, is a, a way to relax it's um, you kind of get all the problems of the world kind of go away and you just kind of focus on what you're doing you and the miniature and some painting and um, um, yeah just kind of soothing have a little bit of music um, as I was playing as I was paint and yeah, it's just a good way for me to unwind from a hard day from work or whatever the case may be. Um, we'll have uh, lots of painting sessions where I can actually show you what I'm doing and how some techniques um, in the future. Um, we'll have uh, Riva, who, or uh, Floof, as we call her, yeah. <laughs> Floof. I'll come in and I'll kind of show her on how to, uh, how to paint as well. She's really interested in doing that. We'll show her how to do terrain as well. Um, and the multiple Sorry. techniques that um, will help you along the way. Um, as you can see, I got a bunch of stuff out here already, just uh, things I've uh, collected over the time. This is technically only like a quarter of the stuff I have. Um, it could be a costly little hobby. Um, so basically, I wanted to say, to starting off, you really don't need a whole heck of a lot. Um, but. Um, and we're going to go over that for a little bit. I'll show you some stuff that I've uh, done in the past. Um, and uh, stuff that's more recent. Just to give you an idea where I'm at. I am not a, 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 um, an expert painter by any means. I call myself intermediate type of a painter. Um, as I'm still learning some of the advanced techniques. I'm not like a, a, a Jennifer a Haley or a... Um, um, any uh or excuse me what was the name of again oh sorry <laughs> um and forrester that's another one that's really good from reaper um the john um n-i-n-g-o-n -N another excellent pa painter um that's uh does a lot of youtubes um so i've i've met a lot of these painters too and they're really good excellent teachers so anyways um show you some of my earlier work that's just kind of makes me shudder a little bit now um, I don't know if you can see that or not
There you go. Okay. Just kind of a little bit of a thing. It looks more like a base coating, a base coat for the most part. Got all those little details, but they're just not that great. Um, I have done better jobs. Did a little bit of shadowing on a little bit of highlighting. Um, just what I knew from that back then. Uh, another real short um, thing that I had back in the past. You can see the face is really bad. <laughs> The chainmail turned out not too bad, but um, and some of the other details. But it's kind of like some of my um, earlier type works. As I went on, I learned how to base coat, how to highlight or better. I learned how to base coat, how to uh, remove minis, and uh, um, and so forth. This is uh, more of my recent stuff. Although I tried a little bit of freehand, as you can see some of the yellow spots back there on the clo on the cloak. The detail on that is incredible. Like I don't I don't know that I would have a steady enough hand to I mean look at the at like the sash around his waist and the metal bits and I mean it just looks incredible. Yeah, I'm real, I'm real happy about the eyes too. The eyeshadow worked out really nice in this yes. one. Um, it's incredible. It's really good. Um, <clears throat> a little bit of a thing with this uh, particular Pathfinder Mini. The sword is actually attached to the base, so I actually had to remove it. And this well, it came with a base, and I went ahead and um, changed it out to my own little base. Um, kind of similar to this one, where I actually sawed off the Mini and uh, put it on there. Excuse the cat. The cat's really bad, but... Um, I have difficulty with the small, teeny tiny uh, minis that are out there. This one's not too bad. I had to redo it uh, completely one time because I tried to use a um, a uh, paint-on um, sealant, and I just totally ruined the whole mini and had to take it down to base. Here's another one that's kind of roughed up a little bit because I had many, um, many um, plays with this kind of character, an archer. So he lost his bow, unfortunately. It's a really um, really, um, what can I say, uh, fragile type of a thing. But I like the, the sculpt. I believe this one's from Dark Haven Miniatures. Ooh, but you can yeah, see... That is really cool. You can see the shadowing on it and the highlights. This is probably my most favorite miniature I painted. This one took me about four hours to do, but because um, I really wanted to get it right the first time. Last one I'm going to show. This is kind of a work in progress. doesn't even have a base on it yet. But the armor is turning out nicely. It still needs to look quite a few highlights on it, and the face needs a little more rear cut and highlights on the hair. Um, but it's just a work on progress. The armor looks amazing. Yeah, it doesn't look bad. It's just it still needs a little more work, a little more highlighting. Um, the shadows look like they look pretty good on it. The shadowing and the, the um, wear and tear of an orc type armor. Sword could use a little more work on it. Well, that's just the work on progress. I'm still kind of working on it. I was doing it for a friend and um, never really finished it and haven't put a base on it either. So, where can we go from here? Well, let's start with um, to let you know that I am, you know, just an intermediate painter, but. Um, You'll see as I'm going along that I'm going to be improving and hopefully as you come along and you want to start or you're on a certain type of level that yourself that uh, some of the techniques I'll show you and um, and things like that you'll be able to meet me and even surpass me and I'll get better as time goes on um, as well. Um, I'm real excited for doing this. I think this is going to be lots of fun and I think you guys are going to enjoy it as well. Um, and, um, you know, it doesn't really matter 
where you start off at, what your level is at the moment. The matter is that you're actually doing it, um, having fun with it. Doesn't matter that you're going to be doing Golden Demon anytime soon. Um, although that's one of my goals in life is actually have a mini and try to compete in something like that. Um, when you're starting off for a painting, there's some real basics. You just don't really need to go all out. Um, you know, I got like thousands of dollars and stuff here, but um, well, not here, but at home. Um, so like I said, only a quarter of the stuff I have. I just wanted to show you what you need to start off with and other thing, other tools that you can get along the way. So basically there's uh, certain things that you need to do. Um, besides a mini, um, the first thing you want to get is some good quality paint, uh, of course. Now, the, there's many, many diaper brands out there. Um, we'll do a paint, um, paint comparison video later on. Um, I'm a Vallejo person for the most part, but I'd use other ones as well. I mean, there's things like, um, you know, P3. I use some of their stuff. You know, for starting off, um, you just want to get an acrylic-based uh, paint that is made for miniatures. Don't go to the, your store, um, local art store, and just get any type of acrylic paint because it, it just um, it's just not going to work well with miniatures. The miniature paint is designed and to work well with just miniatures themselves. But there's many types out there. Like I said, I'm a Vallejo type person. There's um, Air Model. There's Game. There's regular. There's Game Workshop, um, AK type paints, um, there's a new one or a fairly new one out there called uh, Scale 75 which is hard to work with but probably the best paint out there. Uh, again we'll go to a paint comparison video out there later on but um, get yourself just a basic colors to start off with, you can always um, mix your own paint colors as, as you go along by adding a little bit of this, a little bit of that, and um, you know find what type of color you like. But just starting off with just the basic colors for now is um, what I would recommend. Um, you know your red, blue, uh, green, yellow, white. Uh, just real basic at the uh, the start off with, so you can get the feel of how the paint flows. Um, um, next you probably want to do is get like a primer. Uh, primer is what we put on the mini beforehand um, to help um, the paint stick to it. Um, there's different primers out there. Uh, there's brush on primers, there's spray can primers. Um, um, hairbrush primers. Usually what I do is I do spray cans for the most part. Um, like there's um, GW has their own uh, style of uh, primers. I tend to like them a little bit because they do get on pretty nicely, but there are other primers out there. Don't get me wrong. Are those spray primers specifically made for minis or were those just like spray primers like, you know, that you'd find at like Home Depot that you just happen to like the quality of them? These are specifically made for minis. Um, okay. Can you use something, a primer from like Home Depot? I think you probably could. Okay. Is there is there like a difference in like the paint or something or like that? For the most part, for the primer, it, it depends on the, the how much of a, um, how fine the spray comes okay, out. Okay, that's what I was going to ask, like the size of that. Yeah, because you, when you, there's a certain way that you have to prime too. You can't just uh, sit there and go, because it just will ruin your mini, get rid of the details and so forth. There's a sp special technique, and I'll show that later on, uh, how to prime. Um, it has to be a real fine molecule. Um, you could test different ones. I tend to go with GW for the most part. Uh, I like the GW primers. And by the way, a little disclaimer: everything I, every brand that I use, I'm not endorsing or um, uh, we're not sponsored by them. It's just what personal pref um, personal preference. That's something I need to get out there right away. Um, what I've been using lately is. Um, um, 
from Leo. Uh, this one is uh, is a uh, uses uh, with a spray brush with a um, what do I want to say airbrush. airbrush? Duh. <laughs> um, that's what I use mainly for uh, air for I use it and put it in an airbrush and use it that way. But you can you can paint this on uh, as well. I can just um, use a brush and use it that way. Um, see so primer. You got your your paints. Um, there's a ton of different minis out there from different companies. That's something that you have to find later on. Next, I would find some good pair of brushes. Now brushes are. There are synthetics ones, there's um, uh, natural hair ones, there's um, all kinds of different stuff. There's a mix, a blend of it. Um, what I would recommend for uh, paintbrushes to start off with, um, synthetics work fine for the most part, but not as well. It doesn't have the capillary reaction uh, action that we usually have with natural hair. The, the, what I mean by cap capillary reaction or action is um, how it sucks up fluids or uh, paint. Um, how it how you're able to how it comes off of the brush itself. Um, so I usually use natural type hairs. Now the typical type one that you would use for a brush, for the most part, um, is sable type hair. Now sable is a weasel. <laughs> That's found mainly in Russia. In particular, um, uh, the best ones out there, if you want the top quality best brush out there, are the um, Kalinsky um, sable brushes or the red sable brushes. They are the best ones out there. They're the most pricey. Um, it's from this typical type of weasel is from Russia, again, in the Siberian type area. Um, and they're very, again, their hair is very nice. They're, they are kind of barreled shape. Um, they're able to suck up fluids very nicely um, and able to come off the brush real nicely as well. But they can be real pricey as well. Um, my most favorite type is uh, uh, Series, Sense, uh, Series 7 from Windsor Newton. And I changed it if you wanted to show off brush titles or okay. tips or right. Of course I keep it in the tube still because I like these are not cheap. This one in particular, this is a uh, a um, number four brush. It's forty eight bucks. It's fifty bucks a br a brush. Now, this is nothing that you want to really start off with. I just wanted to show you what it's like. Oh, it needs a little conditioner. Let's get a better one. This is a triple out brush, which you can see it's Da Vinci's type style, which is rounded. And it comes to a very nice point. And no matter what I do to it, it always comes back to a nice point. What sizes of brushes should you get? Um, and can you get other sable brushes that are out there? Absolutely. Um, this one from Virtuoso, a whole entire set of uh, brushes. All the way up the line. This cost me like 30 bucks, the whole entire thing, to start off with. If you want to go even cheaper, you can get single brushes. Um, sometimes the ones from the game, um, from the paint lines, and game store brushes are not horrible quality. They're not the best either. That's a good way to start off with. But the uh, size brushes you want to get are two, triple lot, and um, what works is triple zero and um, zero. Why do I say that? Because those are the ones I usually mainly use and that's what I normally see more people use for the most part. 
I'll even get a flat brush like this. That helps with base coating and for longer areas. And those three sizes, Eric, is mm -hmm. that for just minis or would you use those three sizes for terrain also? For mainly, mainly minis. For terrain, um, I start using bigger brushes like this one right here. Uh, why for that? Because you're going to do what we call stippling, which is uh, kind of like this type of motion, so you can cover larger areas quickly. Um, and then when you go to detail, then I go to my smaller brushes, which is like a four or a two. So I would, for terrain, I would go with a larger brush versus a small one unless you want to go for some really fine detail that is there like fa like um, vines on a on a wall or something like that and you want to paint them green and not get it on anything else um, then I would go with a smaller brush but for those three brush sizes for minis for the most part is perfect pretty good now there are different hair style hair brushes out there too that, that they use. Some will say just sable brush on it. Those aren't bad. It's, they sometimes will have like weasel and um, or weasel, excuse me, badger and rabbit kind of mixed into it. They're not bad. They actually work quite well. There is a synthetic um, sable brushes out there right now, which are really good. Um, not as good as the um, sable brushes themselves, but they do the job well. Um, I tend to stay away from synthetic. I have used synthetic in the past, and I tend to use them for, oh, if I want to do just base coating with them, or um, if I'm using them for uh, specialized things and I don't want to ruin my good brushes for them. Um, what else could I say besides using this? I could also tell you a little bit about the anatomy of a brush. Um, when you hear people saying about the ferrule, um, about the brush at the handle. For all brushes, they come, of course, with a handle. The ferrule is what keeps the um, hairs in line with the brush. Um, they keep them together. And you tend not to want to get paint or anything up in there. Um, if you do a little bit, that's not going to end the world, but you don't want to constantly put paint up there because it'll start flaring your uh, brush out. And you want to keep your brush to that fine tip on there. Um, let's see, other brushes besides Sable um, and the Winsor Newton, I look for what they call Da Vinci type style brushes. That's why, that's what their name basically. Um, there's a brand of Da Vinci out there. It's just it's just the type of brush that you have. Um, you got flat brushes, you got fan brushes. Um, I even use makeup brushes, Badger makeup brushes. Um, What's for a Da Vinci brush? A Da Vinci brush brush is just basically what I have in my hand. It's just um, you got the handle of the, um, and the ferrule, and the brush is the actual bristles are rounded coming to a point. Oh, okay. Does that make sense? <clears throat> I didn't know the term for that. Oh, I didn't either. Um, thank you for helping with that. These guys will probably <laughs> want to know stuff like that too, so I appreciate that. Yeah, I, I, I don't think I've ever known anything about brushes other than... Yeah, brush is a brush, it is a brush, right? Yeah. That's really not the case. Yeah, I'm trying to think if I even knew that they that they weren't what they were made out of. Yeah, for the most part, um, um, a lot of brushes, if you're going for natural hair, you can get rabbit, you can get badger, you can get, uh, like I said, sable, which is the best out there. Um, so there... Are there any synthetic because I'm sure, you know, there are some people watching that probably don't want to use animal-based brushes. Are there any synthetics out there that you would suggest that they look for, or? Synthetic sables. Um, there's a, it's a, 
it mimics the, the sable hair. Um, it has its own little barrel hair hollow type design. Um, they have the very close to the same capillary type reaction. I understand there's a, a concern about using animal hair. Um, to let you know though with animal hair, it's not that they're killing the animal and taking the hair for the most part because they want to save their animals um, to make more hair. Um, so they do a lot of shaving of it. Um, but I can see your concern too that maybe you don't want to use animal hair. And I, for, like for I said, for synthetics, uh, what they call a synthetic sable is probably the best one you can get. Um, there's nylon, there's um, um, type synthetics out there. They're okay. Uh, there's what they call gold series. They work all right. Um, How well does nylon work in a small brush? I've only seen nylon brushes for like painting a house. Um, they do make them really fine, and you can get them at your hobby mm -hmm. shop, um, your painting shop, real small brushes for miniature type painting, and they work, like I said, okay, but, okay. um. I've just not ever seen one that small, and I was wondering how they did for small painting. Um, you just won't get that capillary reaction, or capillary action that I like with the other brushes. They don't suck up liquid as well. It's yeah. more like you're just dipping a, um into your paint and then smearing it, smearing it on. <laughs> yeah, so, um, I wonder if they make any human hair. That'd be kind of funny. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I, well, anything that grows hair sheds hair, so. Yeah, it's a keratin strand, so. <laughs> so, it's um, brushing out the sable farm, really. All they need to do is groom them, and it's Bru weird. But they end up with a product they can sell. That's right. Weird. You're f they shave their weasel's butt, and that's what they sell. <laughs> but it works really well. I mean, the cycle harvest. It's very highly prized. Um, a little bit of a, a side note with the, the sable is they one time it was illegal to have sable hair because they were just, it was such a tight market, and it's uh, such a small little thing, so we're worried about people over exhausting the say the sable population um, anyways that's a side note I'm <laughs> sure you guys don't want to know that <laughs> what else real simple to start off with you don't have to really go out there and buy um, things like um, weld uh, pellets um, I do because I like them um, and they're kind of useful, they have their own uses. This is plastic, of course. I use a lot of ceramic as well. Um, you could use just a paper plate. Um, that's what I did when I first started off, was a paper plate or a paper bag. Um, uh, what I would do, uh, a table, I would lay out a paper bag and um, I would either put the paint right on top of there and uh, or a paper plate right next to it so I can see the colors because it's white. The paper plate's, of course, white and you sit there and you just mix them up. Um, Let's see, you can like, use like a plastic solo cup to dip your thing in. You want something for water, to hold water. Or find an old mug, just a simple old mug. And just use it for your water. Funny thing about it, you'll know that you're, you're starting to become a really good painter because you, ever so often you'll drink from your paint water instead of your regular water. Um, <laughs> done that many times where I just picked up a mug. And oh, it's no. Like, <laughs> It's, At least it's, it's not going to kill you. Ew, that is a, a disgusting rite of passage. <laughs> you probably don't, do, purpose, don't do that. There's lots of memes for that. <laughs> lots of memes. Mm -hmm. um, what I did back in the... When you need something to hold your mini. Um, I used to be able to just uh, paint them. I used to just hold them and start painting. Then after a while, I started getting finger marks on my, my models and started to... Um, um, mess up my paint jobs. So what I ended up doing, and I found this out on my own, was just getting a bottle cap um, and um, placing the mini on 
attaching it to the bottle cap. Now there's different ways you can do that. You can use some sticky tack. Uh, blue tack is another thing they have out there. Um, uh, super glue. Uh, sometimes I'll super glue them on there or use um, a cyanoacrylate um, glue. Um, but that's real hard to get it off. What I found out recently that works really well is you go down to your hardware shop and you get yourself some double-sided 3M tape or whatever double-sided tape. Cut off a piece, put it on there, and it will hold your mini really well. Um, and it's easier to get off. Um, so that's one thing I recommend. There's different holders out there as well. You can do um, dolls as well to put your mini on. And lately I found something new, a new product um, from Game Envy. Uh, their holder, which works really well. Um, it has its own little holder on it. You can take the holder off. And just like your bottle cap, this screws on bottle caps. And you can sit there and paint your mini. And if you want to straight out a mini, you can just unscrew it. Put a new bottle cap on and go from there. These kind of rotate. You can rotate them in your hand and they just hit really nicely. You want some extra stabilization? Put an arm on it. There's a smaller arm. And you can hold it, sit there and paint your mini. The reason I'm showing this off is because I really like this holder. <laughs> you need a bigger, you got a bigger mini, you get a bigger thing. But go to Game Envy if you want to check these out. They have YouTubes on them as well. Need a bigger handle so you don't have so much cramping. They got handles for it, and it fits nicely in my hand. Hands are kind of a little bit of a small side, but, but these fit really nicely in my hand. And I think they'll do well with larger hands as well. But you can turn your mini as you're painting along. Oh, that is awesome. Mm -hmm. Nice and, like, you don't have to twist your arms. Like, you can comfortably <clears throat> rest your arm. Mm -hmm. See, as a nurse, I'm immediately looking at it going, aha, no, like, carpal tunnel injuries. Yes, uh, there's times where my hands would start cramping up if I was sitting there. And when you see me painting, for the most part, you're going to see me kind of take my mini and I'm like really close. I'm like, I'm like this half the time. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm resting my hands, my arms and my hands um, are um, for a nice stable um, work area you always got something resting sometimes I'll put like a pillow here um, and rest my arms on a pillow so I'm not cutting up my circulation so much you know just sit here and just keep on painting um, let's see so we went over just getting a cup getting a paper plate so get your miniature paints your brushes um, what else do we get here um, you want to like a little bottle of something of water uh, to help with your diluting your paints, um, or Any you just kind have of water, like distilled water. Like, what does it matter? A lot of painters will use distilled water. Your expert painters. I just use it from the faucet. Um, there's good points and bad points. If you're at really hard water, maybe you want distilled water because it will cause some discoloration to your mini, um, to your paint. Grandma Bunny's still watching. Grandma Bunny. Mm -hmm. Hi, Grandma Bunny. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's my favorite word of the day, is um. <laughs> so, but if your water is not too hard, you can, you can use just tap water. And I tend to use that. I'm, I'm kind of leaning towards going to more distilled water lately. Because um, I'm just getting to that next level. Oh, let's see, paper towel, just get some little paper towel, doesn't matter what it is, it helps clean up stuff. Nice little paper towel. Oh, 
is something to <clears throat> clean up the spills and to um, spit into when you drink out of your paint mug. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Sometimes I'll even use a paper towel. If when I was starting to use synthetics, I would have problems where I had some paint where I didn't want it, and I would actually use a paper towel. This is why um, I only switch um, brushes to dab that area to get the paint off or get the pooling off of my um, miniature. Um, with uh, uh, a good capillary, uh, capillary action uh, brush, all you gotta do is just rinse your brush off, um, dry it a little bit on the paper towel, and then just kind of wick it off. Let's see. Well, the funny thing about that, sometimes I would lick my brushes to get the point a little better. It's a real thing. It's a real an thing. thing. It's an artist <laughs> thing. There's always three parts of acrylic paint. That's kind of funny. There's, um, I could save this for a painting video, but it's just made of water, uh, a, um, a base, which is your um, acrylic. And um, in the pigment, yeah, those three. Of course, the miniature paints they have a little more like full flow improver and some other stuff in there that they don't really tell you about, but it's not going to kill you if you get a little bit of um in your mouth, but um, you don't want to drink it, of course. Uh, anyways, <laughs> uh, what else? Well, we got that. Um, Another thing is if you're going to put together minis at all, you want to get some sort of like a super glue, like a gel uh, type of a super glue. Um, I use the Lockite a lot. That's the brand I use a lot. Um, Gorilla Glue works really well, but you want to get the gel type. Uh, there's what it's basically called, um, if you're going to get it just like a generic or whatever, it's called uh, Sano. Ugh, you can't even talk anymore. Um, Sinoacrylate um, adhesive, basically. If you can get something with a brush, sometimes they come with a brush, you can get that and you can use it as well to get your stuff together. So that's basically all you really need. Another thing I would recommend doing when you're first starting out as well, this goes with um, what they call color, um, color theory. Um, you can watch a lot of YouTube videos on color theory, but I would get yourself a color wheel. Oh. Hmm? <laughs> the wheel is a lie. <laughs> the wheel is a lie. <laughs> the reason for that is it helps you pick out the colors that complement each other and actually enhance their um, stuff. The wheel is a lie. The wheel is a lie. <laughs> but you can see what um, different type of colors you can get from... Um, from your triads to your um, tetrads, uh, what co what's complementary, what you can use, um, what you can put together and make the colors either pop out or work well together and not a bit of an eyesore. Um, for instance, like um, this one, the um, uh, the the archer one, you can see I have some reds and greens. They work really nicely together, and the purples as well, they kind of fit all together. Um, and if you use your color wheel, it'll tell you that red and greens work well with each other. The direct opposite. Um, your different violets, you know, your violets, which I have on my, uh, my uh, cloak or my um, tunic work really well as well. Um, blues and yellows, if you turn this around to go to a blue, it'll show you that um, uh, blues and yellows work really well for it. And when I did my um, my cleric, uh, her outside was blue, but the yellow made the blue stand right out, made it pop, um, and vice versa. So that's why I choose this type of colors. So using a color wheel will help you decide what type of colors you want to use for your miniatures to see what type of, if they complement each other. Um, 
a lot of artists will say you get rid of the color wheel, but um, I'm a bit a little bit I'm a little bit attached to my color wheel. <laughs> I'm just heckling from the side because I have a long-standing grudge with the color wheel. So. <laughs> Why? <laughs> because according to the color wheel, my color orange mm -hmm. is supposed to go well with blue. Yeah. It looks awful together. Blue is a terrible color. You need to look for a shade of blue <laughs> and a shade of, of uh, orange to go well with each other. You just said blue is a terrible color. You said blue was a double color? Yeah, I don't, I don't know what to... I don't. I don't, have nice, I don't, I know, I don't, I don't know. have nice mouth words for that. I, I love the color blue. Oh, blue yeah. is my favorite. Um, it's okay. On the other side of the color wheel, it'll show you different what you can add to your um, hmm. paint colors to get a different shade. Um, so when you get your basic kit of colors, you can see what you can add and what it can change to what type of shade you want. So I love my little color wheel. <laughs> so it's mine. <laughs> um, as you get along, you don't need the color wheel as much because you can get to understand how the color okay. wheel works and how to do your, your uh, figures. Um, then you can go up from there. Now, as you, you kind of expand as you go, I think the next thing you should really go for, um, once you get a cheaper set of brushes, the uh, sable brushes, and start looking at your high quality brushes, which are your Da Vinci or your Winston Noodle, Newtons, Winston Noodles, Winston Newtons series. <laughs> Newton Noodles. Newton Noodles. <laughs> Newton Noodles. <laughs> I was like, Winston, what? Like I said, you can just get some virtuosos, which are just kind of like a mix of sable and some other ones, and they work really well nicely, and they're only 30 bucks. You can get every one you want. Um, it's just a brand. I'm not going to, there's, you can look on, you can type in sable brushes for miniature painting on um, Amazon, and it'll bring you all kinds of different varieties, different brands. Um, and then you can increase your size of brushes. The reason why I chose the brushes I did, the two, the zero, and the triple lot, is that two will cover most of everything. Uh, zero will get you a little bit further down. And when you get to the really tiny things, like the eyes, I go with a triple lot. So. Do you ever use, like, a, a magnifying yes. thing over? Yes. I would recommend that. You can see how old this thing is, um, and as my eyes are getting worse, um, I tend to use a magnification more and more and more. Um, it's a little bit getting used to it a little bit, um, but I'll put that on and and then just look at my mini and it blows it up a little bit and I can actually see where my paint's going a little bit easier. Especially for some of that finer detail that I would find. Um, there's newer ones out there that are even better than this. Um, I'm just a little cheap, and if it, if it's not broke, don't fix it. Um, yeah. But there's some really good magnifiers out there. There's ones that can actually come onto your light source that you can have it like a, a jeweler magnifier almost. Um, that's attached to a base. Um, well, I like the headgears better. They're just a personal, personal preference. Um, let's see. Get yourself some better um, brushes. Um, if you want to get magnifiers, that's fine. The second thing I'd probably get is a wet palette. Now, for people like me that are out in the desert, that things your acrylic base paint dry out really quick. We kind of like that with our, our miniatures because we want to get to the next step to the next um, part. Um, but it has a downside too because it tends to dry on your um, your palette. Um, and you want to hear paint cans just to just stay pretty thin. But what a wet palette does, and you can get it from one of your hobby shops or online, you have a little thin sponge. You can make your own too, by the way. You can just get like a little glass uh, or plastic um, tray and get some thin um, brushes or um, sponges, not necessarily this thin, but you know, like little, and put a little water in here. 
It comes with, um, um, what's that called? Parchment paper that um, is specialized, but you can get your own parchment paper that's used for cooking from the local store and use that as well. I mean, all it does is the sponge keeps the water into, of course, into the thing, and you want to keep a little water into your um, base, but it sucks up to the sponge and then sucks into the, the parchment paper, then into your paint. But the, the great thing about it is it's not giving you too much water. It's not getting too less water. It's just giving you just the amount of water to keep your, your paint dry. And the good thing about these two, if you got your colors all set here and you want to keep it, just put a cover on it, put it in the fridge, and come back the next day and use it. Um, for people like me in the dryer areas, this is a must. Um, If you're in the more areas that are more humid, you don't have to worry about it as much. Um, like if you're from Florida or something like that, you, your paint's going to stay wet for quite a while. How, when you're painting, how long do you have to wait? Like, do you, can you only paint like one little thing and then you have to wait like hours for it to dry? No, that's the great thing about acrylic paint. It dries so fast, we're talking just minutes. Okay. Um, I wasn't sure, like, all the YouTube videos and stuff that I've watched, like, whether they cut out the drying time, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Typically, when you're first painting, and this is something you could do later on, um, I prime, I let it set for a day, so the pr primer hardens really nicely. Then I do a base coat, and I'll let it sit for about a day. Why well, to let that base coat sit there and harden um, real nicely, but then when I start actually just painting with the other stuff, um, I'm going right along um, throughout the whole entire paint setting. That's ideal. But sometimes what I'll do too is just I'm in a hurry. I got to get my paint, my miniatures out on the mat. Um, I'll sit there and base coat it, put it up on my lamp, <laughs> <laughs> let it dry, and then I'm gonna continue. But usually five minutes and it's dry. So it's better to use heat than like have like a fan or something that you're... You do a fan. Uh, some people do heat guns, believe it or not. Carefully, I hope. Carefully. <laughs> Especially for plastic. Um, middle is not that much of a deal, but they'll use like a heat gun on it uh, to speed up the time. Oh, shit, just don't pick it back up again. <laughs> yeah. That's what the bomb caps are for. Yeah. Yeah, it's those melt bombs. Oh, besides dolls, you can also use medicine cups too. Medicine um, bottles. That work really nicely too. Yeah, the um, acrylic paints are really nice for how quickly they dry. When uh, I was in high school and first started painting, what we had in my little town were model car paints, which are tester paints, which are oil based. And they took a long time to dry. <laughs> That's the bad thing about enamel paints and oil-based paints. It takes forever to dry. And they're so toxic, you can't, like with acrylic paints, you can put them down your, your drain. You can put them somewhere safer <laughs> <laughs> and not harm the environment. As with the enamel oil-based paints, they're very harmful to the environment. Um, do I use enamel for my miniatures? Sparingly, um, a lot of it has to do with metal work, um, metal painting. But I use them very sparingly. I mainly use acrylics. Why do you use enamels and oils on metal? It just sticks better? It gives a better effect for the most part. Um, okay. Especially oils, um, like our little um, um, orc. F orc um, character. Mm -hmm. There's oil that's on there actually to um, darken some of the the metal, so it doesn't look doesn't look like it's just bright painted on metal. It um, it kind of gives that worse appearance. Oil and um, enamel paints are better with depth. Mm -hmm. You can think of it kind of like um, some of the fancier nail polishes. Is it because it's it's thicker or something? That's some of it. Some of it. 
the pigment is kind of floating in a, a thicker solution mm -hmm. and it dries. So it's like a richer color, like a, a more... Yeah, the, the enamels have better metal type thing because the metal flakes are actually floating in mm -hmm. the substance. Okay. You can get that type of effect with your um, uh, on, um, acrylics. They don't work as well. Um, that makes sense. It's more of a flat effect than, it, than a lustrous kind of. Right, so enamel will give you that more lustrous effect. Okay. The, that's a very good way of putting it. Yeah. Um, but I use it sparingly. There are pigments you can use that have metal flakes in it that can you add to your acrylic uh, base. Um, I haven't played with that too much. Um, AK makes some great uh, pigments for metal. Um, Since you're talking about paints and pigments, have you already covered the different levels? Because I've heard you talk about primer and then base coat, but I swear to God, there's like four or five other levels after that, like your color. Well, you, this is like a, be like a whole entire different video, but yeah. I mean, you're basically, you got your primer, which is your first coat. Mm -hmm. um, but it's not the first thing you do to a, a miniature. You would have to basically get the mold lines off. Um, if you're going to start with something from really scratch, you don't have to get rid of the mold lines. But anyways, to start off, it's, of course, your, your primer. Then you'll have your base coat, which is putting on just basic colors. You're not highlighting or, or shadowing at this mm -hmm. point. You're just putting on your mid-tone um, base coat and then what you're going to do when you go back is what we call shadowing which is putting in the shadow or the uh, making the when you look at something it doesn't or nothing and just looks like just one color it has uh, shadows will give it a little darker tone to it so in the folds of a cloak you want to have a shadow in there and then the top of the cloak or the the, the crease of that fold you want to highlight on there Mm -hmm. So we do highlighting and different levels of highlighting on that. Um, starting from your base highlight going up to your very brightest highlight. Oh, I see what you're going saying. Going smaller and smaller each right, time right. you go through. Does that make sense? Yes. Okay. The shadows and the highlights, are those just darker tints or colors of the paints that you did your base coat with, or are they a different product? No. Yeah, exactly that. You just, you're adding lighter colors to your base coat or darker colors okay. depending what you have um, depending what type of color you have you may have I'm not just like at saying add like black to your your base okay. um, or white but you can get different colors too you can add like a darker red okay for some reason I thought that they were like a different product that like you like what is the word I'm trying to think of Well, there's there's a few different ways. There's contrast paints that try to do do that for you. There's give and take that I'm sure Eric will go over with at some point on those. Yeah, right. I'm sure you have like an nice entire separate video about. Yeah. You also pay the price for cheating sometimes. Correct. <laughs> one other real good one: cheating, 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 cheating is a Reaper. Reaper makes what we call a triad, which gives your base coat, your shadow, and your highlight. You're all done. <laughs> um, they're kind of nice. Um, of course, you'll, it doesn't give you that range of highlights because you want to have that um, gradation from your darkest mid-tone to your light. Um, but for the most part, you can take them, you wet blend them, um, which is a totally different technique that I'll show later. And you can get that gradation in there by just those three colors, those triads. Hmm. So you got your, of course, your midtone, your highest bar, your highest highlight, and your darkest shadow. A wash. That's what I was thinking of. A wash. A wash um, is a nice way to cheat to get your shadowing done quickly. Okay. Um, or it gives a different um, tint to the color cherry put on. Okay. Okay. Uh, glazing also does that gives a different tint to the colors you have so you like you have a gray you can put like just a tint of um, blue or black or purple by just giving you just a little bit of a um, 
what's the word I'm looking for? Just like a hint of the color. Yeah, just a hint of a color, a glaze of a color, um, filter of a color. Oh, got it. Okay. Let's see what else. Good lighting. That's the one thing that I would also recommend getting. Um, besides here at the studio, we got some excellent lighting right now. Um, but um, your lighting that you want, you want like a, like an architect type lamp. Um, I didn't bring mine with me or another one, Ot lamps. Uh, the reason is that because they give you the full spectrum of lighting and that's what you kind of want for your figures so you don't have the fluorescence can give you a bit of a either a yellow tone or a blue tone. It can be cooler or hotter depending on um, the bulb. Um, I tend to use like a GA Reveal of pipe bulbs, which have a good full spectrum lighting. Um, another thing I use is out lights, um, which give you full, full spectrum. This is the one I travel with all the time, but it gives you that full spectrum lighting so it definitely changes how the miniature looks. It gives you that real color that you're looking for. Um, let's see. Um, for cleaning up your mold lines or putting together your, your miniatures, um, I told you about the super glue. Um, we can also do what we call pinning. So you get yourself a pen grip um, or a, pen, a vice uh, pin drill vice. <laughs> and you just have different drill bits. I have a larger drill bit because I was doing some uh, uh, war gaming, putting uh, magnets in. But anyways, we use that. We do pins to help put things together. Um, green stuff to help attach stuff together if it has a lot of um, big gaps. I use green stuff quite a bit. Uh, if I want to smooth out an area that's real bumpy or it's really just fine, I'll use what we call Millipunt. Did you say Millipunt? It's all right. It's almost a two-part polymer when you mix it. Yeah, when you put it, green stuff is basically you take it a, has a yellow and it's blue and you mix them together and it, makes it turns green and um, right there and then you need to put it where you need to put it and then after it starts to harden and it becomes almost like a really tough plastic versus almost like a metal um, adhesion between two pieces. Very cool. If it's really nice tight fitting you just use super glue like I said. Um, yeah, we'll get that. Removing mold lines for the most part, I use X-Acto knives. But the thing with that, with your X-Acto knife, you want really one dull X-Acto knife to be able to remove your mold lines on like plastic. On metal, um, I get a set of um, uh, files. These are diamond uh, needle files. A different type of uh, flat and circular, wherever you need to get to remove the mold lines. And we'll show you how to clean up the mold lines later on. For plastic, I use sandpaper, different grits of sandpaper. And you do all this before you before I prime. even prime, right? Get through the mold lines. What sucks sometimes is that um, you might miss a mold line. When you prime it, the mold line is going to pop out at you. Oh. And you got to sit there. You got to remove the mold line, and then, and then redo brush it. on. Brush on your primer for the most part or oh, redo it. You don't want to shoot it again because then you're just filling in all the detail. Right. Oh, that's right, because then it'll just be all bland because <clears throat> all the little tiny crevices and stuff will fill up. Also, get yourself a little um, um, cutting mat. They got little, little, little ones, they got really large ones. Quilters know how to use these. <laughs> um, I use a little small one so when I'm Doing my uh, cutting work, I got something that's protecting the table. You could probably even paint on this if you really wanted to to protect your table. It's not a bad idea either. One of these work really nice. One of the things that I did when I was working with a lot of like glue, like glue and paint and stuff like that for um, chemo beads and like clay beads, 
I got linoleum. They're like, I don't know, you can get like sheet, you can get like rolls of it, but on a table surface, you can get the restickable, I don't know, like fake backsplashes and stuff like that, and lay those down and work on top of those. I would just get the linoleum like tiles. Linoleum tiles will work well too. Yeah. Yeah, I don't see a reason why I want. Yeah, something to protect from cutting right down into your table. Especially if you got a nice kitchen table and you're doing that on your kitchen table or something like so that. Take the backing off of it, but the restickable ones, like the cheap and expensive ones, mm. you just put them down and peel them up. But paint and all other stuff, like even solvent, don't go through it. Nice, nice. The, you know, like the stuff that looks like tile, but it's like fake. You, it, you, it's like bendy, like you can roll it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I know exactly what you mean. You're going to get to the hard store and you, yep. store and get those. Those look really nice. You're right. What else? So you've got sprues um, or your stuff is connected to your uh, um, some plastic pieces. You want some side cutters. Um, the real thin angled cat cutters. Um, not like your um, wire cutters, but kind of similar to that to get into the sprues and get them off. And sometimes you got a little piece that you could probably get in there with them and cut them off. Um, there are different styles and different qualities of these. Uh, these are just kind of general I use for uh, more sprues. I have what we call God Hand um, side cutters as well. Those are for really detailed cutting, getting really close to the model. Um, let's see if you want to take your model off the let's say you got the one that already has a base attached to it You want to get rid of that and get your own bases and put them on Matter of fact, you got a really big one. Here's a base from secret weapon That's all they can get And switch into different different bases to make them look really cool. I'll get a diamond or a jeweler's saw These work nice they take them off with real fine blades and they won't damage your thing, but you, of course you got to be real careful. Uh, cutting, of course, so you're not nicking up your whole entire model. Oh, one other important thing for your brushes. In order, you need to want to make sure you care for your brushes quite a bit. Um, This right here is a um, a brush cleaner um, that I use quite a bit. What they do is they, they condition your brushes um, so that they are like hair. Since they're real hair, you want a conditioner in them to keep them from uh, um, getting too dry. Because when your hair dries, it kind of bristles out, and you want that nice point. So these kind of help condition, clean. And condition your hair brushes so that um, they always look good. There's different type of cleaners out there. There's some that actually look like conditioner, um, but they're especially made for acrylic uh, type paints and uh, your br hair brushes. Does that make sense? I hope. You have to rinse it out, or you leave it. You leave them. And it doesn't mess with like the paint. On it, or? Um, I will rinse them off before I use them. Oh, okay. Um, so like a deep conditioner, like you just leave it on there to condition them and then rinse it and then you right. paint on them. So what I basically do is I take it. Oh, this one's dried out. I have to get a new one. <laughs> um, but you take the stuff, you put it on your brush, you roll it around, you know, kind of condition it uh, on the brush. Use one of my glue brushes. Um, you take it and you can just rub it in, kind of just like in this type of motion. And then when I'm done, I sit there and I twist it to a point. And I just leave it. And it, it keeps that point there. So that and probably really helps keep the shape of the, of the brush. brush too. Right. The shape and the longevity of your brush. Because once they bristle out, they're useless for 
painting that is. Right. If they bristled out, they're great for, um, um, you know how I got this grass on this one figure right here? Um, just using some simple white glue and then some uh, grass um, from like the train store, um, train modeling store, I would put it on there. Oh, let's see. Told you about the miniature holder. You could do all kinds of different um, grass and um, dirt effects. Here's a little hint that I have learned from uh, Ninjan, uh, which works really well. Go to your backyard, and if you want dirt, get it from your backyard. Take your dirt, put it in the oven, let it cook so it kills off everything on it. Put it in a little thing, and there's your dirt. And it gives you different, um, makes it more realistic dirt for your bases. Hmm? I never thought about having to bake it. That's a good point. Well, yeah, because you got old bugs in there and bacteria you want to fry it all. Oh, Which are better for base. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, you know, uh, all kinds of things can be in the dirt. It's definitely better to get rid of the microbes. Okay. <laughs> um, since you're using um, green stuff or millipunt for your um, filling into areas, could you sell some uh, um, candle uh, working tools. Um, they look like dental instruments for the most part. These are sculptor tools for uh, miniatures, but they work well for me. And it helps you s shape and uh, flatten the green stuff into your, the hole that you want to fill. And you'll see me use it one day um, when I'm at one of those miniatures. I have a, a um, auger that has a lot of holes in it that I have to fill. Um, don't fit very well together. So, like smoothing out like the join seams and stuff like that, so mm -hmm. that it looks more like it looks. Yeah, so you don't, like don't see the seam figure. anymore. Okay. What else would I recommend um, for painting? Airbrushing. Now, airbrushing is a beast on all of its own, and if you're going to get into airbrushing. I would get it sooner than later, because um, I'm still learning. Because I've been a brush painter for most of my stuffs, but get your compressor, a small little compressor that's only about that big, and an airbrush. So this is mine, um, and learn how to use it start practicing with it. I will probably have a, it's a whole entire video on learning how to use one of these, how it's adjustable and so forth. Um, yeah. What do you guys think? I think that's really cool. The compressors in there, or they can't be in there. It's no. like a little machine. I didn't bring it with me. It's Ours a, is hella loud. It, there, some are very loud and some are not too loud. Um, Depends on the compressor. When I first tried it, I, I got one of those bigger compressors, and yeah, they were extremely loud, and I just get rid of it. Got rid of it. Um, so I got one of those smaller ones, that are only about that big, that are meant for small little airbrushes like this for miniature painting, and they're not not too loud. Mm -hmm. You don't want to do that when trying somebody's trying to sleep, of <clears> course, <throat> but right. you know they're not louder than a, they're much less the loud less loud length than a vacuum cleaner or hair dryer even. No. That's different paint though. For the airbrush? Yes, they're very thin paints. Or you could take your base paint and thin it down with a, a special um, thinner, airbrush thinner. It just takes a lot more and it depends on your paint when that you can actually do that. Um, a lot of brands will come out where you can actually almost use it right out of the bottle. This is from Vallejo. It's model air paint. Um, it's really thin stuff. It works really well. You just take it straight out of the bottle, you put it in your paint, your uh, airbrush, or you could thin it a little bit, um, and I'll use that right directly into the airbrush itself. Do you also brush paint with it so that the 
Yes. Yes. Okay. So yes. maybe that's just like a faster way to get like, I don't know, your base colors or okay. What about can you prime them with an airbrush? Yes. As a matter of fact, I do. Um, my um, Vallejo Gray. Um, I tend to use that the most, and I airbrush them. Okay. Spray them. Because I can see that being a quick way to mm -hmm. airbrush a whole bunch of them. All right. Oh, and talk about primers a little bit. There are different color primers. There's gray, there's white, and there's black, right? Which one do you use? Yeah. Well, it depends on what type of figure you want to paint. If you're going for a space marine, they're kind of a little darker color, then you go with black. Um, if you want something a little lighter, like a fairy, or you're painting a white... Something. something like that maybe you want to go with a white okay. um, gray is a good metal point for everything I found <laughs> for light and dark and ten, I tend to paint a lot more matted than most people um, I paint a little more realistic colors um, so my go-to has always been a gray so I found that out I've seen a lot of people paint with black I tried that for a while and I could never get my light colors to look good I tried white um, and then I would have a problem with my dark colors. So gray is a good middle point. Um, sometimes what I'll do is after I prime, um, this is a little bit of a, a, a trick, a little bit of a tip. I will paint my, um, I'll do a, like a, another primer almost, like a base coat paint, um, like black. On some of my dark areas, and I'll do a white on some of my light areas. Is well, that makes sense. So yeah, that makes sense. So it's like an undercoat, and there's also what we call um, uh, we could do like what we call pre-shadowing, where you can do um, a darker. What some what I've seen some people do is they'll take a black paint, and they'll spray their whole thing, and they'll take a white paint or white primer, and they'll um, prime over on top of it of the lighter areas that you want to highlight. I've seen tricks like that too. That makes sense because then when you lay the color over it, it's like the high, the depth is already built into it as the color goes from the light primer to the dark primer. Correct. Yeah. Correct. And it helps bring out those colors. Yeah, I can see that. Um, what else? What do you do when you're done painting with that? Like, do you seal them? Do you cover them? Do you... After I'm done painting them, um... It's, you have to be real careful with it, but I have used um, varnishes. It's medium thinner. There are different types of varnishes. There's a satin varnish uh, that's kind of a paint-on type of stuff, or you can airbrush it on. It'll be thinning up nicely. Me, I like um, spray can. I'll actually sit there and like similar to how I prime it, I will um, use crayon crystal clear and sit there and just like I did with my um, uh, primer, I'll seal them that way. These are really nice. I like these. Um, they're fine enough to get there so it doesn't obscure your detail or make your uh, character look waxy. Mistake I did with um, brush on um, varnish. Oh, too much varnish. It made it look it made it look waxy. Okay. Um, but I would assume that you need to, if you want longevity out of it, that you need to protect them. Correct, correct. Like uh, my uh, Ranger, I didn't varnish it, and that's why they're all chipped. <laughs> oh, okay. Does that make sense? the The paint itself is pretty good. Um, I like the. I know I'm a Vallejo person for the most part, but uh, Vallejo is really hard for the most part. And there are game lines, that and Reaper's uh, green game lines. Um, paint, the paint's really hard, so it doesn't chip for as easily. Durability. For durability. Okay. But I would varnish. Yeah. Now you said game lines. What, what do you mean by game? Like they have different levels of paint? Right. Um, I usually use model. Um, this is uh, the model color. Um, they're really durable and they're real thick. Um, mm -hmm. Not as thick as GW's paint. 
Um, I tend to use those a little more. Um, they're a little more matte. The game lines. Uh, do I have a game one? I have a, uh, game effects, but um, same idea. The game effects, this is from Plano as well. They're a little more brighter. They're a little more fantasy, a little more unrealistic. Okay. But they're made with a little more, with like a little varnish in there almost. Okay. Because they come out real hard. Um, so other varieties. Cure, you mean? Is that what you, is that what you're yeah. meaning? Okay. When they cure, they are really, really hard. So you almost don't need to varnish them, but okay. I still anyways. And of course, there's air, which is real thin. Um, there's other things too. Uh, I know I don't speak highly of GW's um, paints. However, I love their shades. <laughs> I love, I do, I love their shades. Um, and I tend to go to them a lot. Uh, their shades, their shades and their oils. Um, I use them for a lot of my painting. So, um... So that's the differences anyways. Oh, one last thing I want to say. Um, and these, I've been using this just recently and they've been working real well. If you don't want to get tennis elbow by sitting there shaking your paints all day long. Um, also, when you do your shake your paints, you want to, I should say this too. You want to get steel balls and put them in here. Um, steel little, like little ball bearings. Like little ball bearings. I don't have any with me. Um, little ball bearings, um, BBs that we call them, but you don't want to use BBs or you don't want to use iron pellets because they'll rust in your paint. Hey. And I lost like $300 worth of paint by doing that. That was a mistake, by the way. Um, Holy shit. <laughs> so, um, where do you source steel bearings? Stainless steel bearings. Army Painter makes, um, makes them. I've seen them. By Army Painter. You can also go to your store if your paints are kind of thin, like your airs. You can use uh, plastic beads and put them in there. Oh, they won't like disintegrate or. No, no not the plastic ones. Not the, the stainless steel, don't, of course, don't rust. Okay. So all my bottles of paints will have bar bearings in them. So you can sit there and shake out with the ball bearing in there and sit there and shake and shake and shake, and eventually you're going to get some wear down in your joints and as older as you get like I do um, it gets a lot harder so what I got was an oscillator this thing right here and what does this do this is like a medical oscillator that we use uh, for um, um, mix up your uh, your blood and so forth in the lab or in the science, you want to mix up your, your solution. And when you turn this on, it oscillates. You can put this on there, and it mixes your paint for you. <laughs> it causes a little vertex, vortex inside each of the bottles. Where'd you get that toy? <laughs> Amazon. What? <laughs> I've not seen that. That's cool. Uh, they're kind of loud. I mean, we could plug it in and kind of demonstrate. Um, especially with some of my... I took a paint out here that's kind of really... Uh, separated out with the paint pigment in the bottom and in the acrylic on the top. There's plugs right behind you. So. Other side. This is a nice one because you also can charge your phone wire. <laughs> doing things. Anyways, this is just a particular type of model. This is by the 4E's Scientific Company, and I got it right from uh, Amazon. Um, How's the paint stay on there? Hmm? You have to hold it. So it oscillates. There's like a little wheel that turns around in here. Yeah. And it goes like 300 RPM um, to 5,000 RPM. So I'm going to turn it on real quick. You can see this is um, separated out. Um, oh, I don't have the other one. I have the straight on. Okay, that's fine. So there's uh, the acrylic base up here and all the pigment down below. So I just take this, turn it on, you put it on it, and it mixes it to cause a little vertex in each vortex in each one of these. I'll even do it on one of these bigger ones. 
Let's push it down. That's not loud. Not loud. There we go. Fully mixed. <laughs> what? <laughs> That's actually really cool. I want one. That's amazing. Yep, so I'll do it like upside down for a little bit. Oh, it takes like five seconds, three seconds. Turn it upside. Okay, that's really cool. Um, so I don't know if you can see the vortex on this one. Probably not. Not only because it sounds like a vibrator, but because like you could use that for resin also. Mm-hmm. Shake the bubbles up. Yeah. For you ladies out there, you can use this to uh, for your um, nail polish. Really not where I thought you were going with that. I think that would hurt. <laughs> <laughs> yes, which is why I was about to be like, no, sir. No, we are not recommending this. <laughs> That's hysterical. No, thank you. So, anyways. That's incredibly cool. That is. So this is my new toy that I like playing with. Um, I can go through a whole entire box of my paints. In just a few seconds. Just like that. So this is my, one of my favorite toys. Okay, that thing is incredible. Uh, the paint shaking and paint mixing is a mess. You sit there all day long and you eventually, and if you're like me that works with hundreds of paints, um, yeah, it gets obnoxious in quite a while. Well, and it, it sort of stinks because you'll be on a roll and you'll go to reach for something and you're painting and you're like, oh crap, this isn't ready. And so now you got to... Stop what you're doing to shake this thing up, and you're in a hurry. Maybe you don't shake it enough. Now it's all watery and gunky and all over your model. Well, you I mean, this, hurry. they're going to be That's silky really cool. smooth and like well mixed. The pigment <clears throat> will be evenly distributed. Plenty of time to drink from your paint mug. It's great. Totally. Totally. <laughs> mm. I love that acrylic paint. Um. I wonder if I wonder like how is that is that like a serious meme like among painters? Oh yes. Yes. Oh, geez. So it's okay. It's, it's a real oh. thing. You yeah, Gunzu was, was like, oh, yeah, I've done that before. Um, Put the mugs too close together. Yep, yep. So I try to keep them separated very far apart. But even still, I forget where it was. I'm sitting there really concentrated, and I reach over, and oh, man. Well, it, you, it's because you keep reaching that way to clean the brush and whatnot. Mm, right. So, so you're already programmed to go for that mug. <laughs> What other things I get? I get like little carry-on, little things um, that hold um, nail polish. Mm -hmm. um, or Michaels has a bunch of organizers or, um, like that. Yeah. So I, use, I buy those to keep all my paints in. Um, if you want to get real fancy, you can make a whole entire area with pink racks, but I haven't done that. Um, oh! This is just one of my cases. I to keep all my paints in. Little different colors, but um, yeah, we'll go through quite a bit of um, what um, about bottle paint paints versus um, dropper belt paints and the different type of paints, what they're good things or bad things. Um, there's no perfect paint out there. Um, there's some really good ones, there's some bad ones. Um, the ones are okay. It'll, it's all kind of personal preference. Personal preference. I don't like GW paints, but that's just me. I know people that with GW make some awesome, incredible things from them. Um, 
and this is completely <coughs> opinion. You don't owe anybody anything, so you're definitely to express your opinion. So. Oh yeah, totally. Yeah. Yeah. Like I said, I'm more of Leo. Um, is it AK the new ones I was looking at? I know I have yeah, a brand. The AK is one of the, the modeling paint and pigments. Yeah. And I like uh, AK stuff. I've been playing with that. Scale 75 um, is supposed to be the best paint out there, but the hardest to work with. I've not heard of them. Um, there's only one game store in town that sells them. And Anyways, that's a whole entire different video. <laughs> well, yeah. There'll be more yeah. to come. Let's get into more detail. Yeah, next video. Um, I don't know. Maybe we can lay out some of the stuff that you have and some of the terrain and um, pick, pick one. You know, you pick a mini. I think, um, I don't know. I am dying to try some of the... Uh, Hagglethorn hollow pieces that we have so I think I might try like try my hand at a cottage or something it's far less detailed than the little mini guys and you can kind of walk me through it while you're mini painting mm -hmm. but maybe next stream we will uh, talk about the different types and pick pieces and then kind of go from there mm -hmm. yeah I'd like to show um one thing that was never taught to me, and I had to learn that offhand, was that how do you get paint on a brush? You think you just dip it into your well? Yeah. But there's actually a process to it. You have to thin it out. Oh. You have to test it to see if it comes off your brush nicely. Wow. Okay. Uh, I like to show that because a lot of videos don't show that. I've never a seen lot anybody of, do that. I, I haven't ever seen anybody do that either. That's awesome. Okay. Um... I'm sure there's probably somebody out there. If you find somebody, you know, go and look them up. Um, but the very, very basics, and that's what I wanted to kind of go through, is yeah. show the basics and then increase as we go along. Um, but yeah, just showing how to how to mix your paint and how to get that right consistency um, in order to um, um, get the paint to have the the paint flow off your brush nicely. Um, when I first started, um, I would just take it right out of the well, right out of the paint bottle. And I always wondered why it looked so goopy. So, Which is exactly what I would have done. Without, mm -hmm. I wouldn't have even thought twice about it. Right. wouldn't have even hesitated. Like, how else do I get paint on a brush? Yeah, you just dump it in directly into the paint. Yeah. But you want to decrease, you want to get a little bit of water in there. Because, like I said, with the, with every acrylic paint, there's the acrylic medium, there's water, and there's the pigment. Every single one. Those are three things. And it's uh, very much water-based. Um, so you can thin them out with a little bit of water. You can use paint thinner or uh, acrylic thinner. Um, and I've seen a lot of uh, expert painters use those. Um, I haven't really seen the need for it yet. <laughs> the only time I, I use it for is when I do airbrushing. Okay. Um, then I'll use paint thinner. So. Cool. Well, this, this was super awesome. Like, I'm so excited to watch the progression of even just, like, how do you lay your stuff out? How do you get yourself like like actual from like beginning to like advancing through it so i think by the end of this series like being able to look back at okay from start to finish you know i think the progression is going to be huge so we haven't really figured out exactly what the schedule is for this but we'll put it on our website our socials and the actual twitch calendar schedule like on our twitch main page which, if you guys haven't followed, um, please follow so that you get notifications of when the streams are going live. Um, of when Zappa will be doing his next stream and what kind of schedule he wants to set up for it. Um, but check our socials uh, also for announcements. Um, 
of when he's going to be doing the next installment of the series. I'm assuming that that ZV mic is picking up everything that I'm saying because it's hellacious. Like, it picks up everything. Well, it's the monitor show. So. Okay, good. <clears throat> Perfect. Do you guys have any questions out there? Oh, we haven't done much in the chat, but... The chat, I think I have to fix uh, on the theme. I mean, it's the first time that we've, that we've used the theme or run the theme. And I think most of the people that had uh, been jumping in and out watching um, actually look like their fellow painters. Uh, several of them were commiserating with you about drinking the paint water. <laughs> um, and uh, if you guys do watch this as a VOD and you have questions, either leave them in the comments if you see it on YouTube or head over to our Discord. Um, We'll put the Discord links. Uh, actually, the Discord links are already in chat. They're like two above my last comment. Um, head over to the Discord and tag Zappa in the Discord to ask your questions if you guys are watching this after the fact or you're watching it off of YouTube on video on demand. Um, our Discord link might not actually be visible to you if you're doing it on uh, YouTube. We'll have to. It's in, our, it's in our link tree, it's in our socials, which are all over YouTube, but we'll make sure that we have the links in the description so that you guys can find the Discord. Um, or just put your comments on YouTube, um, and Zappa can get back to you there too, on uh, our YouTube channel uh, under the video on demand. Okay. All right, guys, I really appreciate you having me here. Um, like I said, I'm not an expert for, for say. I'm sure you got a lot of tips and tricks on your own sleeves. Uh, for some for my fellow, fellow, fellow painters out there. Um, it's been real fun, though. I really appreciate the time. Um, I'm looking forward to doing these. So maybe I'll have some tips and tricks that you guys might not even know. We'll see. Yeah, I'm super excited. Well, I think that is it for us for this evening. And we will catch you guys this upcoming Sunday. Should be our normal streaming. I can't ever say this without being dyslexic. Prismatic Dragonfly Tavern. Um, and Gaslands. We haven't decided when yet this week, but we will We will have a meeting this week as we continue to work the kinks out of getting the stream ready to be regular content. All right, you guys, that's it for us. Good night. <laughs>